So this is uh, one of the most awaited videos for us uh, since a lot of students are asking for it. Our ACCA tips worked really well and people want us to do the same thing for CFA. So here are our top 7 tips to help you pass in CFA level 1. So tip number 1 for CFA is that focus on concepts rather than formula. Now this applies to most professional qualifications but even more for, so for CFA because people feel that uh, being a finance qualification there will be much more of calculations and that's all you need to know to pass the exam. That's not true. For example, uh, most people know the simple formula of how to calculate gross profit margin and net profit margin. Gross profit margin is gross profit divided by revenue and net profit divided by revenue. Now, once you know the formula, you can go and give it in the exam. But if they ask you a slightly tricky question that the gross profit of this company was high, but the net profit margin was low, right? What does that, how do you apply your knowledge of gross profit margin, net profit margin to this particular situation? If you understand the concept, you know that gross profit only includes the direct cost primarily. So that means if the gross profit margin is high, direct costs are generally low, which gives you higher profit. But the net profit, which means all the overheads, all the expenses that fall below the gross profit are quite high, which gives you a situation where your gross profit is high, but your net profit is low. This comes more from, it stems more from your natural understanding uh, of the concept rather than just learning the formula. Okay, guys, wait, hold on. One thing is that every video that people see of Zell, there are 90% of you all who are watching the video but not subscribing. Please click the subscribe button and then move forward for the rest of the video. Tip number two, practice, practice, practice. Again, everybody says this, but there is a very particular way I'm expecting you to practice it. In the exam, okay, unlike our school and college, especially if you are in India, most of our studies is done through sort of relying on the textbook which is explaining the concept and less on actually practicing the question. So uh, for CFA what do you need to do? Learn the concepts but then that should be a much smaller chunk of your time invested in studies rather than actually practicing as many questions as you possibly can. So if you are using Schweizer Kaplan for example, um, they have two separate books in which there are just questions for you to practice. Uh, both of those have uh, two mocks each which you can practice from. The CFA Institute itself, they have a learning ecosystem where if you go, they have uh, subject by subject, topic by topic, a bunch of questions which if you practice, they throw back analytics for you, which means they'll tell you which subject you're weak at in one subject, which uh, topics to focus more on. The more you practice, the more you'll be prepped for the final exam, the better chances that you'll have to pass. Tip number three, know your financial calculator well before the exam. What I mean by, first of all, if you're taking up CFA, please invest in either the BA2 plus or the 12, uh, HP 12C. I think it'll cost you four, 5,000, but it'll suffice for all the three levels. And it's extremely crucial. Uh, you can save immense amount of time. For example, formulas such as net present value, which you do know how to calculate manually. The CalC will help you uh, calculate the same thing in just a few seconds. Uh, at Zell, we actually ensure that we spend an entire four hour lecture just teaching the students about all the tips of, of using the financial calculator. It will help you not only throughout your three levels, but even if you venture out into the corporate world. Tip number four, aim at at least scoring 70% per subject. Now, what does this mean? CFA is one of those bodies, one of those unique bodies that has never really confirmed how they correct our examinations and help, help and, and how do they decide which students pass and fail. So a rule of thumb is aim at scoring 70% per subject, which is for 10 subjects per level. What this does is 70% is a good rule of thumb because if you can aim at 70%, the chances of you passing are extremely high. It does not mean that if you score less than 70%, you will fail. But as a student, if you want to sort of almost cement your your passing per level, as long as you can aim at 70% per subject and you're close to that, the chances of you passing are very, very high. Tip number five, time management. Keep an eye out on the amount of time you spend per MCQ for level one. So simple way to calculate this, you have two sessions uh, in your CFA level one, each of 135 minutes each. Each of them have 90 MCQs. So when you break this down, what essentially it comes down to is per MCQ, you have one and a half minutes. 
you have 90 seconds ensure that you discipline yourself while practicing in a manner that if you cross 90 seconds for an mcq move on to the next one even if you don't have the right answer because spending more than that you might still get that answer wrong but you'll also have lesser time to finish the rest of the paper another very important point under time management is when you feel there's an mcq which you're not sure about or which is taking you more than 90 seconds fluke it you have one out of three chances of getting it right since cfa has no negative marking so at least there's a 33 percent chance you'll get it right uh, even if it's just a, a, a blind shot so rather than skipping it or worse spending more than 90 seconds per mcq you'd rather guess and move on and complete the ones you know within 90 seconds tip number six do not ignore ethics or in fact don't even save it for the end i'll explain what that means ethics most people who start level one out of 10 subjects ethics ethics seems to be intuitively the easiest one because it's all about being morally right or wrong and just if you're a good person you'll by default gravitate towards the right answer and that is why your focus of effort in practice needs to go towards the other nine subjects this is what people think unfortunately ethics is an extremely crucial part of cfa number one because cfa as a body wants to tell the world that all of our members are ethically strong they also need to do that and that is why level one has almost 15 to 20 percent of the paper which has only ethics questions i think level two and level three have around 10 percent each so ethics is not something which is a very tiny percentage of the entire paper most people in level one decide to skip ethics because they think oh this i know big mistake because ethics has two major flaws number one it's for most students it's a very dry subject very boring subject so it's always left for the end and then generally skip do not make that mistake and number two the mcqs are very similar to each other so if you've not had enough practice and tested yourself in the exam you might choose something out which is wrong or worse, waste more time on ethics than you should and compromising on the other subjects where you actually need time to solve the questions. So, all in all, take ethics serious. But even from the viewpoint of passing the exam, spend enough time, you'll, it'll be worth it at the end. The last thing you want is that you score almost nothing in ethics, score well in the other nine subjects and fail level one. And tip number seven, be extremely good during and after the exam. Uh, what do I, what do we mean by this? So, unfortunate students or candidates have had the misfortune of talking about how their exam went on places like social media. If the CFA body catches you, for example, posting a review on how difficult you found the exam or anything, which is basically out of their terms and conditions, uh, discussing questions on social media and things like that, they will debar you if they catch you from giving CFA. It's not worth it. So might as well wait for the results to come out and then discuss with the rest of the world what happened. So it's not really important. This is not a tip which is technically going to help you pass the exam, but it might just save you from much greater trouble if you just follow their terms and conditions. So guys, these are our seven tips to help you pass CFA level one. Most of them you can, in fact, all of them, you can start applying literally from right now. So ensure that you go through this video even before you started really studying for CFA as well as sometime during it to help you prepare best. And I hope you guys pass the exam in the first attempt. If there's anything that you know over and above the seven tips which you believe we should incorporate, please put it below for others to see. And if there's anything else you'd like us to create videos on, do let us know.